Praise the Lord. God bless you for being a part of this Bible study tonight. I trust you've had a fantastic week and that God is blessing you. Let's pray together and ask God to bless what we say and agree on here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you by the Holy Spirit to visit every person that's tuned in tonight. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will give us strength and joy in the ministry, joy for the journey. For, Lord, we need you. We need your help and your strength in this hour. We're facing unprecedented days and challenges to our faith, and I pray that you will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. If two of us agree, it will be done. Amen. I want to speak to you tonight for a little while about good like medicine. Good like medicine. And this is towards us living a life that is successful in God, victorious in God, an overcomer in God. We want joy in God. We want to be full of vibrant power. We don't want to drag and and lag and be behind and be barely there in our faith. No, we want to, we want to shine. We want to be full of confidence. The first century Christians walked in that joy and that power and that confidence. And if they can do it, we can do it 21 centuries later. And so Proverbs 17, tells us that a cheerful heart is good medicine but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. A cheerful heart. You know, God designed us to walk with him. And there's always a God-shaped vacuum till we find him, but then when we find him, we've got to make sure that we abide in the vine, as Jesus said in John 15. Abide in me. And we've got to make sure that we stay connected because the joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 8.10 says, is our strength. And I want to speak to you tonight about this because this is something that, if we're not careful, the, the trials and tests and the, the evilness and the darkness and the oppression of the day that we live in will really sap your strength, will really be a weight and a cloud. And you can find yourself living uh, under a fear of apprehension, uh, intimidation. And uh, we want to break out of that. We want to be full of joy because God has to have it. The kingdom of God, Paul said in Romans, is built on a three-legged stool. There are three pillars that hold it up. And uh, you can't have just two legs. <clears throat> You've got to have all three to hold the thing up. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Everybody understands you got to be right with God. And then you got peace that is a result of the righteousness. And you add to that the joy. But the joy is often overlooked because it's such a key component in our life. And uh, I just want us to think about this. How much joy do you have? Do you smile a lot? Do you look happy? Do you frown? Are, are you a negative person, positive? Do you see the good things in life? Are you grateful? Are you happy? There, there, there's no reason for us ever as God's people. Listen, we, we are citizens of heaven. At any moment, we can transfer our citizenship, leave this planet and be forever locked in eternity with the Lord. How can we not be full of joy? The joy gives us strength. You know, I, I like to watch videos of past days, and one of my favorites is uh, Kenneth Hagan and his camp meetings he used to have back in the 90, about 95. They started up to about 2003 when he passed away. And uh, there's 30 or 40 of those on the Internet. You can look them up and watch them. And, and I enjoy the music and the singing and all those meetings were filled with such joy, such joy. I think the greatest component of those services was just joy, people laughing and laughing. And it was an expression of the presence of the Holy Ghost in their life. 
My mom is now in a nursing home, but for years out here, she was retired and she came to our church and she said, I'm going to rename your church, honey. I said, well, what is it? She said, I'm going to call it the happy church. She said, you have such joy in the church. The people experience such joy. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit. And it recharges our batteries. It gives us strength. It, it ministers to us. And Proverbs, you know, says that it's, it's a medicine. That the happiness and the joy that the Lord gives into us is more than just laughing at something funny. It is medicine to our soul. People get healed when the joy of the Lord comes on them. The laughter and the rejoicing is just a little bit, a little capsule of what we're going to have forever in heaven. And it's a little heaven to go to heaven in. And, uh, you know, the Bible is full of this. When we look at the book of Acts, we find all kinds of examples. I love uh, Acts chapter 13 and verse 50. It talks about... Uh, the apostles and the preaching of the gospel. And it says in verse 50, but the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. Expelled them. They got thrown out of town. But how did it affect them? What was their reaction? See, it's not what happens to you, it's your reaction. What was their reaction? They shook the dust off of their feet against them and they came to Iconium. And then the last verse of that chapter, verse 52, gives an addendum, but it's not really an addendum, it's a statement. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Why? Did something wonderful happen? No. They got rejected and thrown out of town. But they were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. That tells me right there, you don't need something happy, something good, something positive to happen to you to be happy. You do in the natural. But in the things of God, even persecution here, even denial all of these negative things added up to their joy. What did Paul and Silas do when they were thrown in jail? They sang praises to God at midnight. Their lives were radiated with joy. And God came down and brought them out of prison. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love Acts 2, uh, 25. It says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is filled with joy and my mouth shouts his praises. You have shown me the way of life and you will give me wonderful joy in your presence. Hallelujah. The deepest longings of the human heart are fulfilled in God and in his presence and in his joy. I like Acts 2.46. It says, uh, and they shared their meals. It says they, the disciples, they had all things common. Many of them sold their properties and homes and shared the proceeds with each other. And it says, and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Acts chapter 8, verse 8 says, after the revival in Ephesus, there was great joy in that city. <laughs> great joy. In the whole city. Why? God had come. God had invaded. God was doing it. Amen. Listen to what Paul says in <clears throat> Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, <clears throat> we have peace with God because of what Jesus our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of highest privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Amen. This is all so temporary. We're just passing through. Your whole life, the length of it is like a vapor of smoke and a 
teapot, a tea kettle with a vapor of smoke rising up out of it. That's your whole life. But you'll spend eternity with the Lord sharing God's glory. So we joyfully look forward to it, Paul said. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they're good for us. They help us learn to endure and endurance develops strength of character in us and character strengthens our confident expectation of salvation. And this expectation will not disappoint us for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love, joy, peace. Hallelujah. You can't beat that combination. Hallelujah. In joy comes strength. In joy comes healing, emotional. In joy comes healing, physical. In joy comes a release of the heavy burdens that weigh us down. We throw them off and we Put on the garment of praise. Hallelujah. Burdens and fears all leave when the joy of the Lord comes. I love it to see people touched by the joy. I love it when Holy Ghost laughter breaks out. She's not here in our church anymore, but uh, Sister Mafoy used to, to be here for years, and she would be a person that when the Holy Ghost would get to moving in some way, in some of the services, she would get joy, and she would start laughing. And I could tell it was the Holy Spirit laughter. One night I watched her laugh until she knelt down at the altar and put her arms around her waist and leaned over the altar. And for 20 or 30 minutes, she just laughed and laughed and laughed. And I asked her when she finally came out from under that glory, I said, Sister, I said, how come you kneel over the altar and hold your sides? She said, my sides were hurting and I was laughing so much. And I asked the Lord, let up, let up, let up. But I just had so much joy, so much joy. I pray God pour some of that on us. In a sad, morose world that's wandering around oppressed of the devil, God, give us some joy. Make us strong in you. Help us to pick our head up and our hearts up. We don't need to hear a sermon. We need to receive the Holy Ghost and what he has. Hallelujah. Our church services are never done with a sermon. They're always ended in an altar service because it's one thing to hear a sermon. It's another thing to come forward and receive from the Holy Ghost what God wants to give you. Hallelujah. And if you don't attend this church, I pray that whatever church you go to, they have altar services where you can feel God yourself. Hallelujah. Good to hear music, good to hear a sermon, but I need to hear God's voice. I need to feel God's presence. I need to know that joy. Father, I pray that you'll just pour joy on your people, whoever is watching tonight. God, whatever battle they're in, I pray they'll turn their heart towards you. They'll turn their heart up. They'll turn their mind to you and allow the Holy Ghost to impregnate them with joy unspeakable and full of glory. In the name of Jesus, I ask it, amen and amen and amen. God bless you tonight. Keep the joy. Praise the Lord.